The first experiment, we put red and blue food coloring in. Now we're sort of ignoring the yellow and the green because they're actually mixtures. Uh, and the red particle, you get quite a small particle and the blue is slightly larger. Uh, and if you have a careful look there, you can see that the red diffuses much faster than the blue. Uh, it's a little bit clear if you look from the top, you can see the red is spread out. It's almost completely red down there and the blue still got a lot more spaces. All right, so the second experiment is diffusion in temperature. Um, get some cold water and some hot water. Um, so you can put a drop in both. Uh, so you can put a bit of ice to make it colder or get the water from the fridge uh, and then use hotter water that's uh, maybe from the kettle. Uh, and you can see there that the, uh, the there's quite a lot of swelling around there uh, on the left hand side and that's due to the water molecules. Uh, hitting it with a lot of energy plus the molecule itself is heated up and it moves a lot faster as well so that uh, random movement of the uh, colored particle is called Brownian motion uh, and you can see it also uh, diffuses and spreads out from uh, concentrated to less concentrated all right uh, the next experiment that we do is uh, particle size and mixtures. Now for this one I've used 50% ethanol and 50% water uh, but I might be doing if I'm doing this with you I'm probably using isopropyl alcohol uh, that I can get more easily from the shops uh, and when you add them together you can see that there is less than 100 so 50 or 50 is not 100 it's 97 in this case uh, and that's because the smaller water molecules uh, there's part there's gaps with the larger molecules and the smaller water molecules can fit in between those uh, and so there's less volume uh, finally, uh, temperature and density. This is a challenge uh, for you. So first of all, uh, I'll just get you to do a very simple one where you can just put a, uh, you can go back to this, uh, to these warmer and cooler liquids, uh, use a different temperature and layer the uh, warmer liquid on top of the cooler liquid. Uh, and you'll see that uh, because there are gaps, uh, because the warmer liquid uh, is moving faster, there are larger gaps between the molecules, so it is less dense. So it floats on top of the colder, more dense molecules that don't have spaces in between them. All right, so we're trying to get you to do this multicolored layer thing, which is uh, really quite difficult. So I'm actually gonna um, tell you how to do it because um, in decades of doing this with students, they don't do it uh, as well as this one here. So let me try and tell you how to do it and see if you can copycat me uh, or even do it better than me and change the method. So first of all, I got all the colors uh, that I wanted so I, it would look the right color. Uh, so orange is yellow and red and green is uh, blue and yellow and the purple is uh, blue and red. Uh, so once I was happy with the colors, um, I then basically turned the purple one into a, the thickest slurry I could. I actually went for sugar because um, I didn't want things to spill and rust everywhere but the sugar will get ants if you spill that one. Uh, it ch slightly changed the color um, that's something I'll teach you a bit later with um, reactions but uh, so I ended up going to salt so the red you keep completely clear uh, clean uh, just pure water and the purple one ended up having salt and sugar and was just a slurry of as much um, solute as I could dissolve in that as possible so the next issue that the bottom and top layers are easy uh, it's the middle the middle one so the orange yellow green and blue um, I got rid of everything and just left measured out 20 mils exactly uh, because I am have to stagger this um, as diff as much as I can with salt um, and so I did it, it was a little bit random uh, because if I added too much salt to the orange one and it didn't dissolve then obviously these are all going to be completely the same density because they'll both have a saturated salt solution uh, so if I added water to any any of them I had to add, add water to all of them the same amount uh, and so I could, don't mind having a saturated solution here because I had salt and sugar in the purple one uh, but these ones need to be different uh, and so this one needs to have just a little bit of salt slightly more slightly more and then the most you can get all right after you've done that the next trick is to make sure you layer them very gently uh, so I used a pasture pipette here so that it, it fell in drop by drop and it, it slid down the side. So when it hits the bottom, I tried to put it down as close as possible so there's not many currents there. Uh, and so I just did that. It wasn't that slow. Uh, it was streaming out. Um, if I failed, I might have had to do it slower, slower but that is, that is quite fine. And I didn't use temperature 
uh, to do these layers because I knew it would take too long and the temperature would um, dissipate and all become the same temperature and that would mess things up. So I went for density layers rather than temperature layers. Um, but you could do it even a little bit better and maybe cool this, use this as cold and keep it insulated in the top layer, um, put in a hot water bath. Uh, that would also improve it. But I think the temperature is trickier. Um, it's uh, You don't have to worry about uh, taking too long if you just use density to do the layers instead of temperature to do the layers.